I am Stacy Pilkington Smith. I'm an illustrator and fine artist here at the Blue House Studio. The Blue House Studio is my personal art studio where I teach classes and we also have a greenhouse and a nursery. I had a lot of different goals. I definitely wanted to, I was interested in doing the program to maybe give kids what I didn't necessarily get in my high school career. Um, I, th I thought a lot about it, like what would I want at that age? I had a lot of teachers that cheered me on in art, um, but I don't think anybody really pushed me in, or give me kind of any guidance in going to school for art. I wanted the students to meet people that were in their chosen field that live locally. I think there's some stigma with the small towns that you can't make it as an artist, and I think in today you can make it in a make it as an artist anywhere you are. Um, that, that's the great part of, you know, technology and today. There's a lot of talented uh, people out in, in so many different fields. Um, whether they're self-taught or they've had some kind of educational background, um, that it's always debated. I've went at my career from both sides. I did try to do it without a degree and then I did go back in to get a degree. And there's pros and cons to everything. If you want it bad enough, you should do it any way you can. We do have the technology, um, you know, we do have social media. Education is available in so many different forms, but we do have to educate ourselves on some level. So I don't, if, you've, if you're self-taught, you still educated yourself. So I, I think the, mo the more you can educate yourself, and what you want to do, the better you're going to be at it. If you're thinking about it, just just talk to people. You you do have to ask them. People are not going to readily availably give you what you need. And I, and I know that when we're young, we may feel intimidated. But ask your counselors, ask your teachers. Um, just explore. Like you know, even if you think you know you want to do business you're, you're not sure what you want you want to do business and you want to do art <clears throat> i think now there's so many different fields and niches that <laughs> you could probably come up with anything and say yeah that's a job ask and tour the schools like you owe yourself all of the um pieces of pie check the schools out, I'll ask the counselors, check out internships, apprenticeships, um, job opportunities in the field. I would just ask yourself, what do I want to do or what are my goals? And then you make decisions with that in mind first. And you, you'll be on the right path to something. Today I am doing um, your illustrator portion and studio artist. My name is Stacy Pilkington Smith. That is my official name. And I own the Blue House Studio in Lincolnton on 150 West. And it is a little tiny blue house. And does the blue house sound familiar to anybody? But, but what were you talking about? Well, in here, yeah. Frida Kahlo has a blue house. Does anybody know Frida Kahlo? So she has a blue house in Mexico and you can go tour it. It is on my bucket list to go do that, but it's a nod to her. So you definitely look it, at, look it up. She's a really cool artist and she had a really cool studio. So that was her studio. <clears throat> so I think Jenna has some questions for me. What is your professional title? Well, I'm a, I guess a, a business owner. I used to have a gallery, Gallery 27. We closed it for the studio. So I would be an illustrator and studio artist. And that is an artist that works from their own independent studio, creating work for themselves, for galleries, collectors, and storefronts. And of course, online presence. What steps did you take to get there? Are you self-taught? Did you go to a technical school, apprenticeship, or college? I did all of them. <laughs> uh, when I was about your age, I did go to CVCC and got a two-year degree, and then it was Associate of Science and a certificate program in graphic design. Um, and then I volunteered at a lot of places to gain work experience. I also have my associates in fine arts and transferred to UNC Charlotte. 
Uh, I have done apprenticeships uh, with the Theater Guild and the Arts Council. What does your day to day look like being an illustrator, business owner, and artist? Um, it's pretty hectic. I won't lie. Uh, there's some days that I work 12, 14 hours. Uh, for the most part, I've kind of worked my schedule down to a Monday through Friday, but during um, touring, festival, and gallery seasons, I probably work six and seven days a week, um, and sometimes shorter days. I definitely get up, I have my coffee. Um, I, I have been trying to get out my planner, planning my day. I have a lot of meetings, appointments. We have an online store. So there's a lot of things I have to check do my emails, go through that. Then Jenna usually comes in, me and her will meet about what needs to happen for that week. Uh, and I'm still constantly making art. So once me and her are done and we've kind of figured out what we're gonna do with the studio, because the studio, we also do events. Um, so she handles that end and I, I teach a lot of classes. So we go through that. So between making art and lesson planning, that's pretty much my day. And I usually end the day with an art class with youth or adults. So that's pretty much it. Tell us about your work and why it is essential. Um, well, like with, with any art, I don't know that it's like essential. I guess you could live without anything. Um, but I do think visual arts are important because a lot of people sometimes lack that um, vision in their heads. Um, and you do, you need an art or artist or an illustrator um, if, especially if you're in those creative fields that can't bring it alive, like you're a storyteller or you're an author, I think that's where visual arts come in and, and kind of shows you. Um, and as we go through the, the demonstration, there's a lot of need for artists and illustrators because, like I said, you, there's a lot of people that lack the vision. And a lot of people are visual the way we learn. Uh, half of us are visual learners, half, half of us that doesn't help. So I think it's well-rounded, it's needed. <clears throat> but as far as my art being essential to the world, I don't think I'm really changing anything. <laughs> but uh, hopefully I do bring happiness and style to people's individual places where they dwell. What advice could you give us if we wanted to enter your field? Oh, I am a, I guess because I did it so many different ways, go to school, um, go to find something, go to school, um, even, or get a certificate, just go get something. Um, it was really hard. I, I did start out with out the degree. Um, I've kind of, I'm kind of your cautionary tale. Um, my parents weren't really supportive of my art career. They wanted me to go to school and be a teacher, be a nurse, things that just didn't connect with me. And um, I tried that and it just it didn't work. I went into business and I didn't like it. So I went back to school. Um, and I'm glad that I did because you're going to meet people that you normally wouldn't meet. You're going to make connections. And I would also say, yes. Do you have your hand up? Yeah. Okay. Huh? Huh? Yes, but they wanted me to be a traditional like elementary school teacher or kindergarten teacher. And I also think that there is something about teaching, like if you know your craft and you want to get good at your craft, teaching helps you. Um, so yeah, I'll always be teaching somebody if there's somebody there to learn from. But as far as that's not my primary role. So I'm an illustrator and artist, and so I didn't want to do those traditionally and going to school and doing the apprenticeships. Because then when you go to school, you need somewhere to go to learn how to do these things. Um, it, it's really hard to self-teach and learn. So I always signed up for everything I could, volunteered for everything I could, and I had a lot of great mentors along the way, and I still have mentors. And everything that I show up to do, like this program, is showing me something and teaching me. So never stop. Never stop learning, never stop growing. That was my whole spiel, was that it? All right, so I'm gonna move into my lecture. Are there any questions? Nope, all right. So I'm gonna have you click it. <clears throat> okay, 
Um, so I'm going to talk to you first about what it is to be an illustrator, what that work process is. A lot of times you would have an author or a company hire you and you would be on staff to, to do and bring the author's vision to work. You will be a part of all of that process. So usually an author or company would come up to you, they would give you a rough draft of a book. You would read it, <clears throat> you would look over it, you would meet with the author, and the first question you're gonna ask is what are you looking for? And then from what they tell you, that's kind of where you're gonna get the gist of where you're going. They will go through with the book and say, hey, we need a double spread here, here's an action shot, or this is where you have to build up. So there's directions from the author to let you know what you'll be illustrating. And so I guess you guys, that was like a, lot, a long winded explanation, I tried to shorten it up. So if you get to the next one. So this is a storyboard. This is where you work all of this out. And so they'll tell you what your, your spreads are. So on this one, this is, this would be considered a 32 spread because you have your cover up here and you're designing these so they're front and back. So they would give you your page requirements. You were like, hey, this is gonna be on an eight. This one has to be an eight and a half by an eight and a half. So when I'm building this, it's a 16 and a half by eight inch book. So that was one, that was one page. And so that was the front and back. That's what this one is. And then you've got your end pages, which nothing normally goes on, unless the author tells you that they want something on there. And then a lot of times they'll give you these notes. You will take this back. You will do thumbnail sketches of everything in your action shots. If you go to the next one, once you've got the book laid out, then you gotta start working on the characters by what the author, you can actually do like a primary, this one's done, like I guess that's the mom and the kid. Some illustrators might do like two or three, maybe ones are required, that's between the author and the illustrator, the, the company. <clears throat> so you would do a character design sheet like this um, and also a really good resource is Disney puts these out. Every time Disney does a movie, um, there is, I forgot what they call it. Michael, do you know what it's called? The, the books that they make and it's got all of their storyboards and their character. It's something, but even their movies, they'll, they'll do this and there'll be a big book and they're beautiful, but they'll have all the character designs in it. And so you would mock this up, you would meet with the publisher, the, illust the um, author, and say, hey, I like this, or I don't like this, or you need to change this. So it's important to flush out these ideas. There's a lot of planning in a book, a lot. If you'll click over. And the, out of all the illustrations, there's a number of different styles. Graphite, watercolor, marker, pen and ink, color pencil, acrylics, digital, and digital vector. Digital vector is using a program like Adobe um, Illustrator. So it's very flat. Um, and then there's some, the digital art goes in more Photoshop or Procreate or one of those programs. Um, just keep click, just click another. So here are the different kinds. It's graphite, marker illustration, the vector, See, it doesn't have a lot of details. It kind of looks cartoonish. Then you have digital art. This is Procreate, watercolor, and colored pencil. And then there's mixed media. I just didn't have enough space for it. Go ahead and click it. So these are some of the jobs. Editorial illustration for newspapers, magazines, and journals. The New Yorker and the Saturday Evening Post were the first to um, utilize graphic designers and artists for their magazines because uh, at the time photography wasn't as cheap and it was cheaper to go with illustrators. Comic book illustration, product illustration for packaging, artwork, and promotional materials. I think we're in a good age today where you, you can make a really good living being an artist right now. Everybody wants their product to be visually represented. And to do that, they're using designers. That Sundrop bottle, your Coke bottle, everything you own, these stickers, your shoes, your clothing. An artist did that. 
Somebody drew that up and created that. <clears throat> Children's book illustrator, storyboard illustration for TV shows, movies, video games, and other productions. We learned with Michael, he might hire a storyboard to come in because he's a filmmaker, he's not an artist. So he might call me up and say, hey, I need you to storyboard this so I can send this out. He may be raising money or trying to get funding for something. So he would hire somebody like me to do a visual representation so he doesn't have to shoot the film, right? Then you have concept art illustrators, kind of the same thing. People will contact me and say, hey, I want to do a mural, but I need you to draw it. We're going to do the mural where we have our own painters, but we need somebody to put something together. Fashion illustrators, you met Rachel. She, she may not have time to do her sketch, or she was like, hey, I just wanted to show you what I need. Can you sketch it down for me really quick? So there is a need to hire artists. Medical illustrations for textbooks, magazines, and other medical publications. Those you do have to have degrees for. If you're going to illustrate something medical, it better be 100%. So a lot of those jobs are nurses or people that have those backgrounds to do those illustrations. One time I did an illustration for, I worked for the city of Gastonia and they were having a canker worm issue and I had to illustrate um, in their handouts for the water department, they would send out a letter and they wanted everybody not to, wanted them to paint something around their trees to keep these caterpillars from eating the, it was crazy. And so I had to study these stupid bugs for two weeks. It was so gross. And illustrate how you painted this tree to keep the canker worms off of it. So, um, that's probably, I probably wasn't qualified to do that, but I did it. <clears throat> Education salary, I meant to cut this one because that's a lot of verbiage, um, but that was to say the certified medical illustrator does, you know, that's just something you can't learn, like if dental books, things like that, if it's a medical field uh, or science field, then you do have to get a degree for those. If you'll click it again. so. This guy, I cannot say his last name. Michael, do you know how to pronounce it? <laughs> but I know you know him from Sp Spiderwick Chronicles. Um, I got to see his, sh I got to meet him and see his show in Charlotte a few years ago. And he started out illustrating D&D &D cards. That's how he started. He was building cr characters for his buddies, his friends. He was designing D&D &D cards. And somebody saw it. And from that point, he's done like 60 children's books. He, the uh, Spider Wick is like his own story, illustrations, everything. So he's pretty well known. I do like his style, but you kind of see that he has a style. So people seek him out for certain. Like if you wrote a book and say, I want to look like that, you would hire him. The next one, the most recognizable, Dr. Seuss, everybody knows him. The Grinch was actually a Ford Motor Company advertisement. That was the first time that Grinch came on the scene. He believe, I can't remember, he was selling some kind of car. And these guys were in a Ford Motor Company. So he started out as a graphic designer, um, did a lot of campaigns, and then he was in the Army and became one of their, started doing political ads. And then from there, he started illustrating children's books. So he has a very fascinating long career. Um, this is some of the sketches from the book that you guys will see. This is the book that I wrote. Um, I did not have a lot of illustrators knocking at my door. And this is what I want to do. So I was like, how am I going to get my name out there? How am I going to get people to recognize me? I was like, I'm going to have to write a book. So I am self-published. And to do that, now I have a mock-up. So if anybody wants to see my resume, they want to see samples of my work, I can show them that here's a book, start to finish. So this is my storyboard, and this is a really loose one. I think this is one of the first ones, and half of this did not make. It's not even in the book, so it changes. I really struggled with making the bees. They were either too scary or too buggish, and I wanted them to look cute. I did not want them to scare kids away. This book was to help them understand what it was to 
beekeep. <clears throat> and so this is what I ended up with. And I felt like that was kind of a best of both worlds. Y'all may disagree. I don't know. Click. And so here's some other, my other work. This is getting into the studio arts part. Um, we do have yearly shows. We make probably 20 to 40 pieces. We go to these galleries, we show them. We sell our artwork, we make catalogs, and then we send them out to other buyers or put it on online to sell. Uh, one of the things that I think is very important being an illustrator is you see how many styles there are. And if somebody contacts me and they want me to illustrate, I need to be, I need to be able to do all those styles. I never want to turn down an opportunity or work. So I try to keep my skills fresh in watercolor. That one's gouache, if you click over. Uh, this is oil paintings, if you'll click over. This is graphite, click over. These are mixed media. They're all a little bit of watercolor and pen and ink. And is that it? I think that's it, isn't it? So um, I try to keep those skills fresh in all of those because you do lose it. Like if you don't use it, you lose it. So a lot of times I try to do a few graphite pieces a year because you get rusty on it. How am I doing on time? It's 1.49. Oh, good, good, good. So today I want you to, we're going to do Little Red Riding Hood. I want you to do a 16 page spread. We all know the story, right? Or do I need to read you guys Little Red Riding Hood? Everybody know the story? Who does not know the story? <laughs> okay, we'll get, we'll get you a copy. Um, but you will be illustrating. You're just going to do a storyboard on the Little Red Riding Hood. Y'all are looking at me like, really? <laughs> does that make you nervous? No, I was just trying to think if I knew what Red Riding Hood was. Okay, she goes to the forest oh, and the wolf. So. Like, okay. <laughs> We're just making sure. So there, I'm going to pass this around if you guys want to look at it. Will you go back to the storyboard page? This one or? Well, go back to the, let's see what the big one is. See if that's bigger. Yeah, I think this one's more helpful. So just, you're going to do a double spread in your sketchbook. You can go ahead and look at that. You're going to make it like this, and you're going to do squares. So you're going to do a 16, it'll be 18 pages, because you'll have your cover and back. And actually, I wonder if there's room to write. Sorry, Michael, I have to write back here. So if you're going to do a 16-page spread, so this is going to be your cover and your back. And then you're, and you can make these as big as you want. They just, you, you can fill up two pages, but if you want to fill up more, that's fine. But go ahead and make your boxes. So if it's a 16 page spread, how many of those do you need? The front and the back do not count. How many, how many squares do you need? You need at least eight, right? Because you need two. So you'll have ten boxes at the end of it. <clears throat> and let me see. I'm terrible at pagination. So pagination is the person who numbers it and then makes the book <coughs> work as it turns. <coughs> Your uh, even numbers are always on the left side. So if this one's 2 and this one's 16, this one's going to be 15. No. How does that? Is that right? 15 and then it counts down. Um, 
Oh, it's going to be much longer than that. I know, it's hard. <laughs> I don't have enough board. I don't want to erase. I don't want to erase their thing. Okay. Here, let me, let me draw it a little bit bigger. And 16 might be a little, I think that might be too much. Let's just do a 10, a 10 page spread. That might be. And if you want to, you could use a full page, like in your, do you have your sketchbook out? Like if you wanted to, you could do the front and back pages on their own separate and then do your, you could do this any way you wanted to, and then do your 10 page spread on another sheet. So this is back cover. So it's technically your two and your one. Jenna, can you pull up, um, or maybe Google Little Red Riding Hood and give them like a, somewhere to go to read the story. Somewhere to go? <laughs> can you help me pull it up on here or uh, on my phone? And just tell just on your phone, tell everybody. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to keep it simple. And then you might have two extras for in pages, but we're not going to worry about that. If you need more than that, but I think this is probably all you're going to have time for. So that's actually how your pages would be numbered. So when they fold and they come together, they'll read correctly. And I think Jenna is trying to pull something up now that if you're unfamiliar with the story. And feel free to change it. Uh, there's no copyright on, um, that's Grimm Brothers fairy tales. So you can take those stories and use them as your own. And that's one of the things that I was going to try to do when I wanted to illustrate. I was like, I need to find something. I'm not a writer, so I need to find a book that I can illustrate. So illustrating short stories that has no copyright are great tools. So Little Red Riding Hood goes to visit her grandmother. The wolf breaks in, eats her, and then dresses up like her and tries to fake Little Red Riding Hood out. You can condense it. If you need to condense it, you can change the, the gender roles just to ask that you don't take out anything or add anything in. So keep it true to the story, but you can make your own changes. Storynori.com. Storynori.com. How do you spell that? Short version. It's S-T-O-R-Y. N -O -R -Y. If you're going to be an illustrator and you're going to want to illustrate, you need to draw a lot. And you need to draw a lot of different things. I mean, a lot of things. Um, you want to be up here to be as flexible and be able to do a couple of different things. But there is something to be said about being known by your style. You could also focus on like if I'm if I usually like a lot of nature, you could be that person where you see Tony and Dr. Zeus, they had a specific style. That also makes you um, salt after two. Like that's how Tony got his start. They loved his D and D characters. They loved um, the things that he was doing on the gaming platform, and so he was salt after because they really liked his style. So if you don't necessarily have a style, do a lot of different art. Find your style and just draw a lot. Because we don't have photographic memories. I use a lot of reference photos, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But once you draw something a lot, you get really quick and good at it, especially anatomy. If you know your anatomy really well, I still struggle with that. I wish I knew 
my human anatomy better than I do. Uh, but the books that Disney puts out and some of the documentaries, they used to make their Imagineers watch like wildlife shows and pictures, make them go to the zoo and sketch because they were doing a lot of animals. If you want to do an extra assignment uh, with your storyboards, it would be great to see one of your character designs on those individuals, like the grandmother, the wolf. Uh, can you go to the character design page? Yeah. So obviously Little Red Riding Hood is going to be doing different things in your book. So as an extra kind of assignment, if you want to do it, flush out what Little Red Riding Hood would look like or the wolf or the grandmother. And usually I tell my students who do the character design to at least get like a side view or an expression that they're going to be using a lot because you're going to need to do that repetitively.